Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be integrating from minus pi to pi sine of nx divided by 1 plus 2 to the x times sine x dx. Let's just dive right in. What I'm going to do is split this up into two integrals. So I'm firstly going to integrate it between minus pi and 0. And then I'm just going to add on the integral from 0 to pi of this thing. I'm not going to bother to write it out twice. Um, so let's uh, look at the integral from minus pi to 0 of this function here. And I'm actually going to do a little u substitution just on this first integral. And I'm going to say u equals minus x. Okay, uh, because if I do that, I'm now I'm then going to get uh, limit 0 and pi. So it's going to look similar to this integral over here. So if u equals minus x, that just tells me that dx is minus du. And now I can just go ahead and plug everything in. So my integral, well, when x is minus pi, u is going to become pi. When x is 0, u is going to become minus 0, which is 0. And then my integrand is just this thing here. Sine of nx will become sine of minus nu. But because sine is odd, I can bring the minus sign to the front. So it just becomes minus sine of nu. And then divide it by 1 plus 2 to the x is 1 plus 2 to the minus u. And then sine of x is sine of minus u. But again, because sine is odd, I can bring the minus sign to the front and just have sine of u. And then dx is just, as we see, minus du. What's quite nice is I have two minus signs, so those cancel out nicely. I've also got a minus sign here, but I can actually use this to swap my limits. So I've currently got pi and 0, but I can get rid of the minus sign here. Oops and get rid of the limits and swap them around. So I actually have 0 to pi and just du as the, uh, instead of minus du. So now I've got the integral from 0 to pi of sine of nu divided by 1 plus 2 to the minus u times sine of u du. And it looks very similar to what we began with. And in fact, now I have two integrals, this integral here and this integral here, which I'm adding up to give me i n. But these are both integrals from 0 to pi, so I can actually combine them together and get that i n, therefore, is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of this integrand plus this integrand. But I notice that both these integrands look quite similar. I've got sine of nx divided by sine x in both of them. So I can actually just factor that out. And what am I left with? Well, from this integrand, I've got 1 over 1 plus 2 to the x. And from this one, I've got 1 over 1 plus 2 to the minus x, and then dx. But I can go one step further, because if I look at this second fraction here, if I multiply the top and bottom by 2 to the x, the numerator is just going to become 2 to the x, and the denominator is going to become 2 to the x plus 1. But that's the same as this denominator, so I can bring them together. So just to be perfectly clear. This thing, I can multiply top and bottom by 2 to the x, so this 1 becomes 2 to the x, and this 2 to the minus x just becomes 1. And now the denominators are the same, so I can bring this all under one denominator, and I've got 1 plus 2 to the x divided by 1 plus 2 to the x, and of course that is just 1. So in fact, this integral here is just the integral from 0 to pi of sine of nx divided by sine of x dx. So now we have a much nicer version of our formula for i n. It's the integral from 0 to pi of sine nx divided by sine x dx. Now let's see how we can evaluate this integral. Okay, so we've proved that this complex looking integral here is just this integral here, which still isn't super easy to evaluate, but we're going to evaluate this integral now. And the trick to this is by looking at differences in i n. Because if n is small, if n is 0 or if n is 1, this is not too difficult to compute the value of. But what if n is larger? It would be great if we could find a recurrence relation between the i n's. And we can do so using some of our trigonometric identities. So what I'm going to do is consider i n minus i of n minus 2. So if we just plug all this in, we get the integral from 0 to pi uh, of sine of n x minus sine of n minus 2 x all divided by sine of x dx okay now what can i do with this well i noticed that i've got sine of nx minus sine of n minus 2x divided by sine x and i have a play with some of my trigonometric identities and it turns out that this whole expression here can be collapsed into this one expression cosine of n minus 1x now if you want to know why exactly we can do this you want to consider this expression here. So sine of nx minus sine of 
n minus 2x, which is what we have on the numerator, and write this as sine of n minus 1x plus x um, minus sine of n minus 1x minus x, like so. And then use your double angle formally on this, and you're going to get that this here equals, uh, oh, sorry, I, should, I need to put a 2 there. Uh, this will equal 2 uh, sine x times cosine of n minus 1x. So if you divide both sides by the sine x, you get that this thing here is 2 times cosine of n minus 1x. So I'm not going to go through those details because that's kind of boring. This thing here is just the integral, 2 times the integral from 0 to pi of cosine of n minus 1x dx. And now this is nice because this integral here is just zero and that is independent of what n is. And you can do this in two ways. You can either do the u substitution u equals n minus 1x and then just compute it algebraically and show this is zero. Or what you can do is just consider the graph of cosine. Uh, it looks something like that. And every multiple of pi, it's the integral is kind of going to vanish. Uh, so if you do do the u substitution, u equals n minus 1x, you're going to be integrating from 0 to n minus 1 pi. So every multiple of pi, you are kind of, well, in fact, that, that's not the picture I want. I want this picture instead. So every multiple of pi, these two cancel out. And then another multiple of pi, these two cancel out. And so on. Uh, so this integral is always going to be 0. So this tells us that i n minus i n minus 2 is 0. So in other words, i n is the same thing as i n minus 2. So if you have a really large value of n, we can keep subtracting 2 from n until we get to a small manageable number. And that's going to tell us what uh, i n is. Now that we have i n minus i n minus 2 is 0, let's suppose we tried to work out i of 37. Using this logic, this is going to be i of 35, which is i of 33, and so on. And we could keep just subtracting 2, and this would therefore eventually be just i of 1. So in fact, we only need to consider two cases, when n is odd and when n is even. And when n is odd, the case is going to reduce to uh, looking at i1, and when n is even, it reduces to looking at i0. So let's look at i0 firstly. This thing here is the integral from 0 to pi of sine of 0x divided by uh, x. But of course, the sine of 0x is sine of 0, which is 0. So this whole thing is 0. So integrating 0, it's just going to be 0. How about i1? What is this? This is the integral from 0 to pi of sine of nx divided by, oh, sorry, sine of x divided by sine of x. And that's quite nice. That cancels out. So we're just going to get pi. So i of 0 is 1. i of 1 is pi. Therefore, i of n is equal to 0 or pi. 0 if n is even and pi if n is odd. Anyway, that solves this problem. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. And if you have stuck to the end of this video, I hope that means you have enjoyed it. And if so, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. It is free and it shows me that you have enjoyed this video. Anyway, I'm going to stop waffling. Thank you for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Have a great day.